Welcome to The Heal Podcast. I'm Kelly Noonan-Gores, and every week I speak to the leading doctors, healers, spiritual teachers, and scientists to find out what is truly possible when it comes to healing. I also interview real people with extraordinary healing stories. My philosophy is what's possible for one is possible for all. On today's episode of The Heal Podcast, I sit down with Patty Penn. If you watched Heal, you will remember the scene where Patty did an EFT tapping session on Eva Lee to help her release some of the childhood trauma she had trapped in her system. It was perhaps the most powerful scene in the film, and every time we screened Heal, there was never a dry eye in the room. Because the release that Eva had gave the audience permission to release a little pain from their hearts as well. Ugh, aren't mirror neurons amazing? Anyways, Patty is the founder of Pause in Joy, a unique and dynamic way to live the life you came here to experience, while simultaneously clearing, defragmenting, and healing everything that prevents us from our joy. As a Reiki master, Patty teaches each person to heal themselves and fortify the already undeniable connection they have to spirit. As a guide and coach, Patty created Dynamic Tapping, for everyday emotional intelligence and overcoming limiting beliefs. Besides all that, Patty has an amazing Scottish accent and a hilarious sense of humor. So let's get to it. So Patty, thank you for coming on the Heal Podcast. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. So we met years ago. I know. Um, I can't believe it's been, what, three years now? Four? Four. Four. <laughs> and um, you do Reiki and EFT, but, but since yes. Heal, you kind of switched up what you called tapping. You changed yes. it to dynamic tapping. So yes. tell the audience a little bit about what you do and how you came to do the work that you do. Okay. That's a big question. It's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Reader's Digest version. Okay, so I started uh, with Reiki, and I wanted to do uh, this modality because it was the most intact modality f um, to learn. And I had came across Reiki growing up, but I'd never gravitated or felt compelled or the call to do it until my father took depression in my 30s. And being a working class Glaswegian, he did not talk. <laughs> so at that point, there was no tapping to be done. And uh, I just wanted to uh, do Reiki on my dad's head because he felt as if his head was exploding. Mm. And that was my in. But I, I'd been working with energy since I was little. And then I knew that I wanted to find a Reiki master, but I had met many Reiki masters and it needed to be the, a person that, for me, I grew up with, oh, it's divine white light, it's this, it's that. I wanted someone that came more from um, the medical model and the Reiki master, who was a, a new Reiki master at the time, so she wasn't, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> uh, she, uh, she was also working at the Beatson, which was the cancer hospital, in, in the radiography department oh. for 25 years. Interesting. So for me, she understood the terminology that I was trying to navigate with my father's depression, because that was who I was practicing on. My father and my mother who had a tumor. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. Cancer. Yes. Okay. Uh, so it, these were the, I, I, I had to learn fast and I had to uh, be there for when they were ready to look at the emotional contributions that they had um, picked up along the way in life like we all do. Yes. So then my Reiki master said to me, you need to do that tapping thing. I got a message that you had to do it. And I said, listen, it's enough with the invisible energy without now doing that tapping thing. And she said, no, you know, you need to do it. So I went along and I learned it. And I was very resistant because, you know, it was 20 years ago. Another thing that I have to explain, it's... Uh, <laughs> it wasn't quite as accepted. It wasn't accepted. It wasn't mainstream as it is now. And uh, it was very big in Scotland, funny enough, because it was big with golfers. It oh. was taking three to four strokes off a pro golfer's game. 
EFT. Yes, we had little tents at the, you know, Royal Troon and, you know, people were... Oh yeah, it That's was a fun fact. Yeah, when people when people are sportsmen and they know something's going to shift their because um, golf is the game of consistency. It's the game of keeping your emotions in check and being neutral and being consistent. So it's a it's a mind game. So they wanted their anger, their rage, their jealousy of another player to not play into because the minute you have that negative thought as a golfer you end up in the bunker yeah well, it's the same thing in life you know you have a negative thought or consistently thinking that you're not enough you end up in the bunker yeah you your your grip gets a little tense yeah and it's these micro movements but they're from your mind and yeah these negative thoughts wow. yeah so it was uh something that people could see that it had this kind of correlation with sport and I started using it in my family, and I started using it with my father. And it wasn't, I saw it, so at first it was just kind of pause, let's just take a pause, you know, and everything was just about pause. And then about 2008, I had a vision and a dream when I was waking up in the morning where it was pause, it, it was a joy with my pause symbol in the middle. And I didn't really know what it meant, but I knew I had to buy a new website called Pause and Joy to my editation. <laughs> <laughs> that was my relationship with spiritual conscious energy, being irritated at a message. And uh, so I, I, I did that. And I kind of, over the last 10 years, have um, kind of polished what that means for myself, for the community, for every, everybody kind of like living it. And... Um, and then with the tapping, I started to, you know, because I was working with two types of people in Los Angeles. I was working with people who were terminally ill or had a diagnosis that were waking up to, oh, I need to get healthy. I need to change my diet. I need to look at my emotional contributors. And then I was also working with creatives. I was working with a lot of directors. I was working with a lot of actors. I was working with you know, people that would just sneeze and they'd be in the Los Angeles Times as artists, right? <laughs> you know, that people who knew that if I don't shift my own kind of not enoughness or stuff that I'm bringing as inherited beliefs from kind of ancestral stuff or cultural things, it's the difference between me having my career or not having my career. Like a block. So, so it was like a death for them as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they needed to look at... so so, And I enjoyed these two... Um, kind of bookends uh, because they were so different but it was also uh, really interesting for me to see all the different ways that you could use it mm. uh, that was that was practical yeah right uh, and then those people had children and then they had to do it in their children do it in their husband I, everybody started um, kind of it started it's building out yeah started building out and then um when heel happened and uh, there was that scene, uh, I was kind of shocked in the movie theater when people were crying and coming up to me later. And and then even in the Q&As, because people were asking me, oh, how, do you, how can you sit and hear that? And I thought, you have no idea. That's my, that's my daily day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and to me, it's like seeing the best part of someone's movie in their life. It's their, that change moment. I started receiving some emails uh, from people who had tapped and they're like, oh, well, I've not had, you know, that kind of feeling. And, you know, what are you doing differently? So people started telling me I was doing something differently. And I realized that because we go into stream of consciousness a lot, in um, in the community and I started to realize how much you know the people that I work with are really very courageous and very bold at being able to go to that place because they know they have to admit it mm. if they don't admit it then we're not going to shift it and there's a safe space because we want you to admit it because we might have it too so there's this kind of collaboration together uh, with everyone and it, it started to show me how much I had kind of developed this, this process where, you know, before you even came to me, we unpacked what you were coming with, what you were coming with and what you were leaving without.
uh, how to unpack all the pieces in your life and because sometimes people think that this this area over here is where all the problem is. This is the 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 real main issue, mm -hmm. but it's actually you know not. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can read between the lines. I can read it what you're not telling me, uh, and I start to kind of poke and prod and open up in you know the email, and uh, and some people are ready for that. They're like because it's kind of really preparation for when you're going to be sitting in front of me, mm -hmm. because it's not an ambush. I'm not going to ambush you. I want you to know what you're coming in and what, where we're going to go, mm -hmm. and be prepared for what's going to come up, and that feeling. Uh, that you know people saw and heal, mm -hmm. uh, and and so that people are oh my goodness I'm I'm so frightened but I know that I want to do this mm -hmm. or you know I had a, I, I received a fantastic email from someone who said you know I'm so terrified that you're going to say I'm too far gone but then I realized if you said yes you'll see me I'm then terrified that you're going to see me mm -hmm. so that to me is like. I'm so I'm so frightened, but I'm so uh, tapping into how courageous and brave I am at the same time. Yes, and that's when people are really in that space where they're cooked, mm -hmm. they're vulnerable, <laughs> they're ready for yeah, and they're they're they're, they're vulnerable, but they're also in, in their bravery to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, people can be vulnerable, but they're not ready yet mm. yep. to go to go there. And I think that is what the difference of, of how I see tapping and what I'm doing is uh, being in that dynamic place. Because I could start tapping on someone and they start to shut down if they're not ready. Yes. They start to go offline. They start to kind of like, oh, I'm so tired all of a sudden. I could sleep. Oh. And it's inside I'm hearing abort, abort, yeah. abort. Oh, gosh, <laughs> we're going to make a shift. This is terrifying. The right? unknown. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. So that I don't want to have because it's... Um, it's not a, a reality show where we're getting um, entertained by someone having a, a, a moment where they're shutting down or they're having like a panic attack, you yeah. know? So I like people to be prepared that they are um, gonna go there and they're, they're willing to go there. And the, the, every facet of themselves, of their inner child, their 12 year old, their 15 year old, their five year old, their two year old is all there too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and no one's going to sabotage anything. Yeah, the two-year-old, the scared Yes, yes. Child. The two-year-old comes up a lot. Uh, the five-year-old comes up a lot. The teen comes up a lot. Mm. <clears throat> so inevitably, while you're, even if you're prepared and you talk about it and you're, you know, you know, put on the armor and you're like, I'm ready to go into battle and, and release this stuff. Yeah. Inevitably, there's going to be that moment of discomfort and you just you just keep pushing you need the people that are willing to walk through the fire yes but I tell them about the discomfort and I say listen you're going to feel as if you're being choked not by me <laughs> but uh, this lump in your throat like a frog in the throat uh, scenario uh, like you know when people are going for auditions and the, the biggest fear is that they're going to choke mm -hmm. right it's the same thing when people go for interviews right at high levels they're going to choke mm -hmm. so that feeling people are fam familiar with so I say you know I've got you or just you, I just need you to kind of repeat what I'm saying and we're, uh, we keep eye contact. And I can tell by the breath, I can tell how they're breathing when they need to take a breather, when we need to stop, when they need to take a glass of water. Mm -hmm. And I can read their energy mm -hmm. uh, because energetically we're very connected in that moment. And they're also trusting me. They've chosen me in a way, someone said to me the other day, you know, she had to apologize to her therapist because... <laughs> She, would, she had just seen me on heel, but she was telling me something she hadn't told her therapist, and she felt bad. <laughs> and, and I said, well, why do you think that is? And she said, well, because I know that you're going to destroy it. <laughs> I believe it. And we're going to, like, just annihilate it. Yeah. And we, we, and this is the thing about even therapists that I work with, they, they're fantastic at unpacking things for people and getting people into a place of understanding. But sometimes that rage and that resentment and that um, betrayal mm -hmm. and uh, anger 
and disappointment is hard to shift. Oh yeah, girl, I'm in that right now. And when we can tap into to that kinetically with the acupressure points, while we're in stream of consciousness and going into it, it gives it a, a, a way to get out of the body while we're ranting and repeating it mm -hmm. and, um, and letting it go. So for people that may have heard of EFT or may have heard of mm -hmm. tapping, now they're hearing about dynamic tapping, which is your special um, zhuzh that you bring to the table. Just explain why tapping works. It seems, because mm -hmm. I've done it before and it you know, feels like, tell exactly like scientifically why it works, what you're doing when you're tapping. Well, when you're tapping, you're tapping into the body's energy system. Uh, of like there's a super highway and there's these key acupressure points mm -hmm. that have been mapped out where certain highways all go through. And when we are seeing a label of what you believe the issue is, so you give it like a, how, how much is this betrayal, right? Between zero and 10. And the person's like, it's a 10, it's a 12. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> And where is it? And what does it look like? And what does it feel like? You know, sometimes it is a, a condition. You know, it's in my shoulder. I've had this frozen shoulder for like six months now. You know, I've had this pain in my neck. I have this thing here. It's like, this is what it is. Sometimes it can show up physically. Sometimes it shows up in behaviors. Sometimes in, you see patterns of why you do things. So there's different ways of going into it. And that's a, a whole other uh, conversation, but when you're tapping on the body's energy system, while you're tapping into the betrayal, all of a sudden something happens in this, the psyche where you're like, yeah, maybe I'm not really that betrayed. I don't really feel betrayed. I feel like I betrayed myself because mm. I really knew, mm -hmm. right? So certain things are happening because you start to kind of like let, it starts to kind of leave the body's energy system. Mm. And then you're like, well, maybe it's not, you know, because it's not a 10 anymore, it's now a four. You know, you're like, oh, it's a four. It's, what is it now? It's, it's, it's more disappointment, right? That person disappointed me. And then you kind of get it down to, and then the person's like, oh, it's a one. You know, we're fine now. And you're like, oh, well, why do you want to hold on to the one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why not the zero? Why not the zero point? Yeah. Why do we not want to get to zero point? Because the one is sometimes hard for them to admit it, or it's hard for them to let go of or they don't even know what it is because the one is I I wanted that person I had an expectation of that person I liked that person I wanted that person to be something that I imposed on them mm. Mm -hmm. because it benefited me mm -hmm. in some way. Yeah. So there's there's all these aspects to it. And when you start to kind of like realize that, or sometimes like one of my, when sometimes I do workshops and, you know, my students really go there because <laughs> they know it's an opportunity to shift something that yeah. they're either working on with an album or they're working on with a film or they're working on with, you know, their, their diagnosis. So they don't hold back. So when new people come to a workshop, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe that person said that. <laughs> you know, when they're like, well, you know what it is, Patty, I'm holding spite. You know, I'm spiteful. Uh, and and I, I don't want people to take credit for my thing. People are like, people say these things. <laughs> like, it's so freeing because we feel them. But they're we... like, oh my God, this is, this is like, just outrageous that people are that tapped into themselves that they're even able to see that. And there's such a safe place, safe place that people um, enjoy doing it. And that's what the whole pause and joy is. Like yeah. the pause is silent, right? That's the being present. And like, let's enjoy getting to know ourselves yeah. and calling ourselves out and saying, you know what, I just, I feel really jealous. And I know why I feel jealous <laughs> and I need to tap it because it's affecting what I'm trying to kind of pull off. Yeah. But if you don't realize that, imagine how that kind of eats at you yep. and eats through you. Mm -hmm. So you're obviously so self-aware. You've been working you're so... Oh, I would never say that. No. No. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. Like, do you tap on yourself daily? No, I, like, I would never say that because I know how it gets you. Yeah. <laughs> when you say you're woke and you say you're, uh, um, I, I would rather say that I'm, um, I'm 
a work in progress. Yes, yeah. agree. Because I, 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 I know that um, it will get me. In whack you over the head with, yes. oh, you think you're woke? You, th <laughs> you think you're so woke? What about this? Yeah. this and it's so, something so, like, base, yeah. you know, or so obvious. Yeah. And it's 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 uh, embarrassing. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I don't, I don't see it. That so I'm, let me, that, Alex, yeah. let me rephrase the question. Um, <laughs> I'm aware that I'm unaware. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> Genius. So do you... <laughs> Do you, like, what is that? Do you tap every day on yourself? Yeah, just I look, when things I look get, for it. You do, okay. I look to see what I can shift in my unawareness today. Okay. That I'm unaware of that's going to make my life easier and more enjoyable. But does it work to tap on yourself or you, yes. you need a facilitator? Okay. No, I teach it at level two. And I teach it at level two because at level two, my, <laughs> my students call it the game changer. Because you can either wait for life to send you lessons mm -hmm. Which is kind. Of, I think. I think how everybody lives their life. You know. I think we all have learned to be like. Oh, I need to look at that because now this thing has happened, and I think that's just normally how we were taught. And uh, I thought to myself, well, I don't really want to wait for to be shown my blind spot. <laughs> yeah. By this a character being put into my life. So I would rather volunteer to look at things gently without that happening. Uh, so what I do is I have, uh, and this was from my own Reiki master. She uh, was studying psychology and she made me do it. She was, well, I was one of the first students she had to uh, do this and then I implemented it and then developed it into another area. But it was to send energy back to every year in your life. Ooh. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and it's just for 30 days. So if you're 60, you bunch years together. Okay. And But in that, it's a process because you're going to sit with your 15-year-old, your 12-year-old, your 5-year-old, and you might actually start to exhibit, as an adult, certain <laughs> proclivities of that 12-year-old. Interesting. So then I started teaching tapping. I started to put the dynamic tapping in at level two because I'm not going to be there at two o'clock in the morning when you wake up in a sweat from being... <laughs> so I started to kind of integrate the tapping into the Reiki um, attunement level so that you had it in the moment mm. for when you were going through something that I wasn't there or I wasn't available. Mm -hmm. Right, And then... They, they, you know, people started doing it on their family. People would, you know, they have it. They have it for when they're going for additions. You know, they sit in the car and they tap on themselves. Or, you know, they're going for a job interview. Or they catch something, like something that they're feeling in a moment with someone else. And, you know, note to self. Yeah. Tap on that later. That was ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it becomes something that's integrated into your life. All right. Just, okay, so for the people that are out there that watch the scene with Eva in the film. Yes. Can you just, I'm just so curious, like, why does the, tell me how the EFT works and how you're like, it's almost like a reprogramming of the mind while tapping on the energy centers. Like You're not reprogramming the mind, you're actually uh, neutralizing what you are calling this emotion. Okay. Can you just like give us like an example, like walk us through like? Yeah. So, oh, so what we do with 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 what Eva was going through mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. So when I arrived, I had already sent energy to the room. Okay. And I think I believe uh, the one of the the cameraman told me he had done Reiki, but he hadn't used it for ten years. Mm. So as the, the, the session happened, his Reiki activated when he was holding the camera and he said his arms got very hot. He could hide, hardly hold the camera. Mm. And then when I looked at Eva, because even I had had the email exchange because I said to you, I'm not going to work with her unless we do this email exchange. And she was great. She was very transparent and uh, we... So she knew what was coming, but she also said in the only Q&A Eva did that if she actually knew what was going to happen, she 
like maybe wouldn't have done it. Yeah. So, you know, for her, it was kind of ignorance was bliss, uh, but it was great that she didn't know. Yes. And um, when I looked at her, when she had this realization energetically, when I looked at her, I said, why don't we just tap on um, not knowing what was going to come up? Mm rather than going straight into, you yes. know, I just kind of putting Ava at ease. Yes. So there was a, I could feel a tension in Ava because energetically I'm tapping into her, mm -hmm. you know, with the Reiki, of feeling this kind of tension in her throat fear, and her, yeah. yeah. And uh, let's just tap on this, you know, fear of not, you know, just not knowing what's good, the unknown, yeah. right? And I think that's for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. the, the unknown of I'm going, I don't even know what's in there that might come up in front of this person, never mind with other people in the room. Mm -hmm. So we had tapped on that, so she felt a lot more at ease. And then um, we, you know, went into that space that she was holding where and I think this is uh, for a lot of people because uh, of the emails that I've received over the last four years of people who have felt that they were the mother mm -hmm. of their mother, yeah, or that they were the parent of you know their their mother and father maybe being alcoholics or mm -hmm. you know their their or a, a single parent being you know. Um, uh, just checked they out. had to take on too much responsibility to yeah be yeah and uh, but then there's that aspect of that, that makes me who i am mm -hmm. but the, we what we want to do is get rid of the thing that is um living in the body that is no longer needed mm -hmm. rather than let's keep the parts that are you know because it's not going to take away any it's not brainwashing where it's you're not going to remember you know you're you're able to remember a trauma when I work with veterans they're able to remember the trauma but there's no charge there because mm -hmm. what it's doing is there's the trauma but the the emotional charge the electrical charge has been disrupted mm-hmm because that's what the emotional charge is. It's a disruption in the body's energy system. Because it's not being processed, so it's stuck. It's stuck. So um, what what this does, it lets it out of the body through these key acupressure points. You know when you're playing squash and you're talking to someone about someone thing really passionate, like you're really annoyed about it, and like if you played squash or tennis <laughs> and you're hitting a ball and you're like, I can't believe they said that. Yes, yes. <laughs> there's there's a, 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 or doing yoga even, right? You do a really great class and you feel, oh yeah, I got rid of that. But then it kind of slowly starts to trickle back in. Yes. Right? Because yes, you did get rid of it kinetically for that moment because you were talking about it yep. but imagine if you were tapping on key acupressure points while you were doing that it really releases it from the body yeah exactly okay so there is like a once and for all shifting that can occur because like yes. I do therapeutic things like this morning I was like I, ha I haven't been able to work out all week and I just feel this pent-up frustration yes. because that's therapeutic for me so I had to get on the spin bike and like that gets the sweat moving and breathing hard and maybe I want to scream into a towel or something yes yes um, and these are great these are great tools but it's temporary but it's temporary and this is what was so fascinating about fascinating about Elizabeth Craig she was doing yoga she was doing yes. all the things and I think you said to me at the time that was what was really called you to yeah. do, make this this documentary because she was you she was me doing everything right she woke up with stage four cancer I exactly was like, Holy shit so that I need to learn more <laughs> yeah so I think that was a a, a great aspect to kind of put putting that in there it's not just because you're you know um everybody thinks oh it's because you're li leading an unhealthy lifestyle but how much is sometimes doing five spin classes and you know using that you know in Ayurveda you know because I studied Ayurveda for for a while when I studied yoga and it was there's a thing called your ojas in in Ayurveda which is your reserves of energy and when we start to tap into our reserves of energy, uh, which is when you're spent or you feel, you know, uh, just worn out, mm -hmm. you know, tired, um, then you start to, it starts to compromise the immune system. Now, it's the same when you are using fitness and you start to get adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. 
and you start to use fitness in an unhealthy way because you don't want to look at your marriage yeah. or your children or your, your, your boy, it. your boss, mm -hmm. right? That is a narcissist that you're enabling. Uh, <laughs> you know, like real life stuff. You know, when people talk about stress to me, I just, um, it kind of snooze off because it's, it's an umbrella term. It's anxiety are all umbrella. Uh, well, anxiety is a byproduct, but it's also not really saying what it really is because people don't really kind of sometimes want to go there. Well, you know, my sister borrowed 15,000 and she's not paying me back and she's went to Vegas and I can't get hold of her. <laughs> <laughs> and she's done this my whole life, yeah. you know, uh, you know, or, you know, my father's cut me off, you know, and they're not speaking to me because I won't get sober. You know, there, the, uh, there's, there's all of these aspects that we use these umbrella terms where people really are screaming inside and they need help and they need help really fast. And sometimes these are the tools, well, I don't see it sometimes, but these are the tools that, you know, can, you can come to me, but then you can learn how to excavate on your own, mm -hmm. you know, where everything is in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll do it together, but you're also going to do it yourself as well, because, like, this is all introspection work. Yes. But also looking retrospectively at all the patterns in your life that you're like, oh, I know what this is going back to, but doing it in an enjoyable place. Doing it in a place of, oh, this is, this is, I know what this is. This is this thing that happened to me when I was 19 on campus. This is why I'm choosing all these partners. Mm. 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 This is why I'm, you know, yeah. having this uh, overlooked at work because I'm really invisible. Where is my invisibility coming from? Oh, I remember my, because when I was five, my father was an alcoholic, I had to be invisible. What if we can't remember? Like, what if you we... remember? You know, <laughs> <laughs> that was a real yeah. snap answer. <laughs> yeah, because I'm always engaging the nor. Yeah, the knower. Like the this, knower. The person who says no, or the the person who knows. The, everybody knows. Okay. We just dance around not knowing. Really? It's it's a game of hide and seek, which I don't really get in the middle of, because it can be really kind of um, aggressive. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> I work with people that know, even if they don't know, I'm going to engage you knowing so that it comes, comes forward. to the surface. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Tell us, give us a little cool transformation story that you, one of your favorite like stories of, of someone that you've worked with that either had a, a physical diagnosis that you moved them, helped them move out of, or a major breakthrough in their life or <laughs> oh my god it's like it's like what's the favorite oh my god i don't know um i think for me when i was in my 30s uh i think it was around 2008 and i wondered what it would be like to work with someone who knew that this work worked mm. categorically. All in. All in. In their bones, they knew. Mm -hmm. And a week later, he showed up. And he wasn't a yogi or in he didn't do any of this work. And, um, but his sister had um, used this work on a terminal diagnosis she had. And so he knew it worked. Okay. And she didn't want to work with him, so she found me. Uh, because obviously, yeah. you know, anything uh, family-wise. And I worked with him, and he had colon cancer. Wow. And he was going to juice fast for uh, weeks. But he also knew he had to look at all of the emotional... Um, Shit. Shit. In his colon. Uh, in his colon. And uh, he basically came to me for six months. And, and they said it wasn't aggressive. So they, they allowed him to do his uh, airy-fairy stuff. 
uh, as they put it. <laughs> and uh, he um, had a trampoline. I took him out horseback riding. He uh, would come to me every week and he would say, okay, I don't think there's anything that today, Patty, like uh, there's nothing. And I was like, oh really, what about this? Because I was getting this coming in in the car. And he was like, Damn it! Damn it. <laughs> Why do I even come here? Uh, and laughing, you know. So we had such a laugh, but it was really, you know, intense uh, things that we would work through. And after six months, he uh, went back, and they were like, um, "We have to do a scan because they couldn't find anything, and they did his blood work, and everything kind of was showing that." nothing it wasn't there and he uh yeah and they went in on the thursday in keyhole surgery and uh on the saturday he was with me doing a sweat <laughs> wow yeah and they took it out with keyhole surgery just this whatever small, little yeah polyp was left and he didn't do any any radiation no chemo nothing wow and that was and he gave me this blue ball this blue glass ball you know, that um, was a, a gift to kind of symbolize that time in his life. So that was really an amazing journey yeah. for him. I, there's There's been so many people have come into me with braces on that they were gonna have surgery on their back the next day. And, you know, but that of what was stored in their back, you know, of um, people passing, people dying mm -hmm. in their life. Didn't even know they were artists, you know, that then became artists after doing this work. You know, because it activates, like, what is your, what have you come here to do? Like, you didn't come all of this way to, you know, be this miserable. Yeah, play it safe Yeah, and um, miserable yeah. and depressed. Yeah, because, you know, uh, people are, sometimes don't admit, right, that they're in their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we're really not trained to go through the door marked fear. Yeah. And I am like, but that's where the, it's exciting. Yeah. That's where the door is. That's where something's behind that door. Uh, but we um, unfortunately have been conditioned to avoid. Yeah. Who is it that said... Uh the cave that we fear to enter holds the treasure we've been searching for or something. I don't know. Might be, might be Yoda. Might be Yoda, <laughs> Joseph Campbell, something like that. <laughs> Who knows? Well, you know, he lived with uh, George Lucas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. See? Yeah. Um, do you see, I mean, obviously, I'm, you know, do you see kind of patterns in emotional certain emotions that are stuck or certain traumas that show up in people's bodies physically so for instance you just mentioned they were holding on someone's grief and it was debilitating their lower back or yeah. maybe a skin issue is anger because it's take, you know trapped in their liver and it can't process things so it's coming out of their skin i don't know i'm just well it's all it in, for me it's all in singularity there are Yes, definitely uh, correlations mm -hmm. that you can attribute certain things, but each person has their own singularity of what they have lived. Yep. So someone may have a um, lung issue, mm -hmm. right? Which is which we've went through for the last year mm. of 2020 yes. with with this thing attacking people's lungs. And, you know, the lungs energetically are to do with grief. Grief, yeah. So when we uh, look at grief in different dimensions in our life of the grieving of not taking those chances, or, you know, if we look at, when I went to Santa Fe uh, uh, with Greg Braden for the, the documentary, mm -hmm. And I was doing a Q&A on the Saturday night and this fabulous lady who was a death doula mm. uh, asked me some questions because she had looked at my, my website and she was telling me how she sits at the end of people's lives and asks them, and, and they've also done other studies with nurses of mm -hmm. the things that people regret, they wish they had taken more risks, they wish they had loved more, they wish they had done all of these things. And she was having this kind of, she said to me she's having this kind of epiphany that I was actually getting people, rather than at the end, somewhere in their life, to look at those things. Ooh, I have chills. 
And I was like, and I, and I felt that that was such a compliment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was so grateful because sometimes when you're in your work, you're in a vacuum. <laughs> And I've been kind of like in a kind of like little kind of alchemist laboratory for the last mm -hmm. 20 years. And then you came knocking on my door <laughs> and I was like, what? show me the gold. <laughs> and I just, you know, I, I, I like to work with people that are do that want, I don't, I don't want to convince you to do this work because mm -hmm. then it sounds like I'm selling something into you that is, t it's too secret for that. Mm -hmm. And it's too mystical for that to, um, you're you're here to go on your um, as Joseph Campbell uh, would say like follow your bliss and mm -hmm. you know go on the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. That's what all my work is built on. Is like let us all be the heroes rather than the victims mm -hmm. in our life and transmuting that if you feel like that and why you feel, I mean, there's many different reasons why people feel like that in their life. But when they feel like that, and they feel like that, and they feel like that, it becomes a almost further self-fulfilling prophecy and it perpetuates a vibration that they sometimes, they catch and they're like, I need to shift this. Mm -hmm. I need to shift this because I keep getting these people in my life that want to use me, that don't value me, and I can change this. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so amazing that you, it's, I mean, and this is so many different people, but for you to be doing work that can shift people's, you know, yeah. that, that the end of the life, you know, perspective, Yeah, you're finally like, because you're so close to the end of your life and, and often people that, you know, all the spontaneous healing research where people were sent yes. home to die at stage four cancer and terminal this and terminal that they shed off all the shit that was no longer yes. meant, you know, serving them in order to live freely and joyfully for the Completely. last piece of, you know, and, and that's why those epiphanies come to them later at life and, and they talk to their death doula. Yeah. And because they just shed all the bullshit, they forgive yeah. people, they just want to connect with their families and loved yeah. ones. Nobody says they wanted to work harder or longer or stress more. I know. And for you to be able to, you know, start to open that up for people middle of life early of life is such a gift you know it's it's just been a I, like i enjoy it you know and i enjoy people that uh even if it's terrifying we enjoy that we all love roller coasters mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> we all love scary movies you know or some people don't yeah. but we all love certain things that are a challenge Take us and, on the edge. and it's exciting like on the edge. yeah it's exciting and i think we uh, don't teach enough to to kids to really embrace uh, being brave. You know, one of my youngest students was five. Ah. Uh, he's our favorite. Can I you know, <laughs> vote him in as president in 2052 and or whatever? He, um, he said to me at five that, um, he said, you know, I've been saying that mantra you know, that you gave me years ago. And it was like, years ago? <laughs> like, years ago, you weren't even here. <laughs> like, how many years ago? And he says, I don't know, like a couple of years ago. And I, was, and I couldn't even remember what the mantra was. I says, what's the mantra? And he says, I am brave. Aww. And I says, oh, okay. So then he starts to tell me the story that he loves to go to Disneyland. And now that he's at a certain height, he can go on this roller coaster. And the roller coaster is really scary, but he's got his mantra. I'm brave, I'm brave, I'm brave. He says, but I really wasn't brave. But I yeah. <laughs> just get saying it. And he said, and then halfway through the ride, he started to enjoy himself. And But if he didn't have the mantra, he wouldn't have got on the ride. Yeah. So he put that all together. Yes. And, and he would have never gotten to the experience of joy. Exactly. Because he would either be... Too scared, not on the ride, avoiding or shutting his eyes and, and panicking uh, the whole time, and, or, and, and avoiding it or yeah. pretending he was too cool for school. Yeah, that ride's not a very good ride anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's not for me. Look at the people in that ride, judging the people. Judgy, that judgy. Were, were brave enough to go on. That. Yeah. So he then, uh, so I, I was like, oh wow, and he said, but he says I really like going on the bumper cars. He says, but there's a new thing called the atypical, which is. A real car with my dad, but if I if I bang into anyone, the mechanic comes. He says it might cost a lot of money, and like it's you know it's a whole thing for him. That's funny. So I said, oh, I said, so you need to be really cautious in that car. And he said, yeah. 
I says, well, let me tell you, life's like that. Sometimes you need to be in the bumper car and sometimes you need to be in the Atypica. He says, how do I know which one car I'm in? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, that's why I have to attune you. Yeah. I have to attune you so you know when to be the bumper car and when to be the other car. Yeah. And, he, and he looked at his mother and he her and he says, why did it take you so long to bring me here? Oh my God, at five years old? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have it on tape. Okay, well, it's crazy. I need to start bringing Riley to you. <laughs> well, I just started doing the kids book. Uh, we, we have two 10 year olds that are helping me write oh, it. My God. And the things that they are telling me is, and now the brothers are waiting for their turn. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're doing it in six months period. Uh, we've done the first part of the class and then we're gonna do the second and we're gonna have the tapping. But you just imagine like these kids being able to have these, because to me they're tools. Mm -hmm. They're just tools to have for life. Oh my God, I'm, I'm doing my exams. I'm, you know, first year mm -hmm. on campus, you know, like I, I, I have social anxiety. I'm so, I feel socially awkward. I can tap on that. I can rake in myself. I can center myself. So to me, it's, it's practical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not even um, something so out there. It's, it's no. practically the tools for life. Yeah, the tools we were never taught, which is yeah. why we spe we're spending our whole lives unpacking the sh well, you last see 40 the magic years. <laughs> in your daughter. Yeah. You see the magic that she has that, you know, when people say to me, especially with two, three-year-olds, and they're like, oh, what does Patty do? And I say, like, I do this magic that's connected to the universe, you know? And they're like, oh, yeah, I know that magic. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. in it. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's real. She's deep in it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I feel like I have a difficult time. <sighs> There's so much suffering, and that's another thing that this past year revealed. Not that we weren't aware of it before. I mean, we are digitally connected in real mm -hmm. time with the world, and obviously there's just so much suffering all over the world. Yes. So how? Yes. It's like we're sitting here. I find myself censoring my own joy because okay i've got a great story for you good because i'm i'm you know how can we balance this like i'm a i'm an empath but at the same time i don't want to live and yeah. dwell in the suffering and and be responsible for trying to fix everything yes I, you know i work so hard too i want to yes pause in my own joy, joy. but yes. i don't want to feel but i feel tremendous yes. guilt yes because i live such a privileged life but i feel like i've worked hard well, and i spoke to ram das about this okay please tell me what he has to say because Ram Dass was in Marin County, I think it was, I don't know, the 60s, late 60s. And he was playing with his friends on the beach and he was throwing a frisbee. And he was really enjoying himself. And it was a, I think it was a nudist beach as well. And they were all <laughs> playing frisbee. And in the moment he was about to throw the frisbee, he actually saw what was transcribed on Gandhi's tomb. And I'm going to paraphrase here so because um, I don't know the exact um, quote, uh, but it was, if the next action you're about to take is going to help, the, uh, the most suffering, uh, will you take it or are you going to take it? And he thought, do I throw the frisbee or do I not <laughs> throw the frisbee? Uh, like, do I need, the, uh, but he is went off. Is throwing the frisbee going to help? Help, it's not going to help anyone. But he then realized that it wasn't one or other. It wasn't that I had to um, kill my joy and be a kill joy to uh, be in the suffering of others, to be compassionate. Mm -hmm. That I could actually um, be in my joy, not in compensation, right, mm -hmm. to another person's suffering, but be the two of them integrated so I can enjoy my life and also help the people who are suffering and be compassionate. Mm -hmm. It wasn't one or other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I think that always, I put it in one of my, my first Reiki books, it, it came up a lot when people start to do this work and you start to feel, oh, I'm enjoying my life. <laughs> and you know, things are happening around you with family and mm -hmm. things and you're like, ooh, you want to, push it down yeah, and we, we, we do that, we do we are killjoys mm -hmm. um, because we don't want 
people being jealous of us. We don't want people covering. We don't want to upset people. And uh, we don't and, want to seem insensitive. And, and, and sensitive. And Ramda, I thought that Ramda's story was was perfect because it was um, it wasn't the one or other. It was you know enjoy and also be compassionate yeah. to other people's suffering. Yeah, you and can I feel do like both. Throwing the frisbee, doing things we enjoy, painting the picture, yes. hiking with friends, these things that, you know, going on a vacation. It allows you to then also help people from a place of joy rather than from a place of, oh, then do I do that because I'm pitying your mm -hmm. circumstances and I'm, or am I, oh, let me be the, the savior, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's coming from a more, uh, balance kind of neutral place you're not doing it for, for any kind of extraction mm -hmm. it's um or feeling bad about yourself yeah. because you feel good and we i feel like we are generators of our own joy we are yes. literally energy generators by our choices yes. by our activities by our food choices by the people that we the energy of our environment we can generate yes. a certain energy and we can amp it up and if we're doing things we enjoy that actually gives us life force energy yes in which we are able to then yes think clearer have more energy to help more people yes. you know serve on a bigger platform and the thing is when i when i see enjoy it's not um you know some kind of portfolio picture of someone like on a cliff in yeah. Malibu it's uh like I enjoy hiking at 10,000 feet with my dogs that to another person is like a nightmare yeah yeah <laughs> uh somebody else doing something that they enjoy I could be like wow yeah lessons to you uh because that's not something that I would correct be be compelled to do um so I think we all have uh, different um, uh, uh, doorways to walk through that we have to experience our own joy. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who are scientists, these people who are uh, working in NASA, people who are um, helping uh, uh, doctors without borders, you know, mm -hmm. they enjoy that. Yes. Everybody's finding their their niche that yeah. that other people are like oh my god like people who are journalists that are on the front line, you know in war zones they do it because on some level they enjoy it yeah yeah and that's to their, get that's, that story out that's part of their service and there's exactly you know, seven point whatever billion people on this planet we don't have to feel responsible for we can we can say prayers we can. Be, you yes. know, live and exist in compassion and you know there's yes. there's different people doing different things we just have to take yes. our own little piece of the garden and tend it to it as well yes. as we can you know one of my one of my students uh yesterday actually said she was she's up in san francisco and uh she and she's a lawyer you know everybody thinks that everybody that does this work is kind of like artists or yeah. painters or you know yogis, uh, yogis. And, and uh she she had be, has been putting up a lot of posts saying, pause and joy this. I was pausing in my joy with the kids today and we were pause, doing pause and joy tapping on this. And, and a woman messaged her and said, you know, I was going really through it today and I saw one of your posts <laughs> that said, and uh, she said, and I had a choice where I could be like, oh, her, her pause and joy, oh, good for her. Yeah. And I just decided in that moment to let your light into me of what oh. you enjoy and connect through you. And I decided to take that pause and enjoy this moment of where I was at yeah. in it. And uh, she says it changed everything, so thank you very much. And she was like, wow, I didn't expect that message. That's great. Right? She said, because, you know, you are being sensitive to people going through things, but then she had it in the opposite way where she didn't expect that. Yeah. I love that. And I think, you know, you've touched on this in so many different ways, but if we can just become aware of whether it's looking at Instagram or watching the news or walking down the, you know, standing in line at Starbucks or whatever it is, if we can be aware of our thoughts and our triggers, and then yeah. rather than just like knee jerk judgment reaction, path and joy, you know, fuck you. No, but I want you to. I really do. I want you to uh, think that. I want you to catch you but saying just to be F aware. You, that's what I'm saying. And being like, I wonder what that is. That's what I. That's that exactly what I'm saying. Really irritating me about this obnoxious joy stuff that yeah. they're all doing yeah. what is it that just 
is bothers me so much. Exactly. Um, and that's, uh, you know, I, I, I've been doing a lot of workshops and a lot of um, writing a lot of books over the last year and beta testing them mm -hmm. uh, because they'll go with like videos. And I, I, I put this story and I think it's a great story, but I was outside, my friends came in from London, they wanted to go to all the cool places in town. So I said, let's go to Catch. And it's a uh, uh, here in Los Angeles. Very and trendy. Very trendy. And uh, we were coming out, and it was packed. It was a Tuesday night. It was packed. It was before COVID, just before COVID, in January. And um, this boy was outside. He had newly came here from Atlanta. He was one of the paparazzi, and I was waiting for my Uber. My friends got in their Uber. My Uber was three deep in the valley, so I was just standing waiting. And he kind of came over and he kind of slid over and he said uh and he's looking around like he's like yeah <laughs> like some kind of like gonna give me kind of cia documents yeah, yeah. and he says to me uh can i ask you a question and i said yeah he says that place is packed and it's a tuesday night and i said yeah and he said and i've been watching everybody coming out of here and i've realized I'm no different to any of these people. <laughs> and I immediately thought two things. This is really interesting that he's picked me to have this conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. with. So I need to give this person my full attention. I put my phone away. And I said, aha. Uh -huh. I says, what else did you notice? And he said, I, he says, I also know that, I, that they, they just had a thing. They just had a thing, right? They, they, they just focused on and you know I said yeah and they really believed in that thing oh. and oh. they really uh, trusted that thing and that thing became sacred to them and they really valued that thing and uh, I said do you have your thing and he said I've, I've got my thing oh. he says but I've not been giving it I've not been polishing it like I should do like these people do oh. he said uh, he said have you got your thing I said I've got my thing <laughs> And he says, okay. I says, okay. Oh my God, I love this story. You changed that little photographer from Atlanta's life. It was, and I put it in a bit, because the fact, the fact of the matter is, it's outside of catch. Yeah. And I'm like, because you're the catch. Yeah. There is no catch. You're the catch. Correct. But everybody that was, you know, not everybody, this is a blanket judgment, but I've been around the block enough to know that a lot of those people coming out of the door are, they're not, you know, they're they're there looking for someone else that they feel is got their thing more than them. You know what I mean? They're but looking the, for that celebrity or that whatever. You yeah, know? but he he just I think it was just such a pure moment of realization, an aha moment, and just such a secret to realize it. But maybe because he was holding a lens, you know, and you're looking through that lens and you're zooming in and zooming out, and but he he. That, that first realization that he was no different to them yeah. in their high rolling vehicles. Yeah. And that they just had a thing. And he has a thing. And same as when anybody's looking at Instagram and someone has 100,000 followers or someone's yeah. looking at a People magazine and going, wow, yeah. who wore it better? I wonder if well, I could ever wear that. But dress. That's, that, that's the rig system to divide us. Uh, to put comparison, right? Because that's yeah. the thief of joy, you know, is to make us uh, be separated mm -hmm. rather than, oh, well, if I can see you with uh, that many followers or, you know, wearing that nice dress, you know, I should get that dress if it's so nice yeah. on you. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe I, uh, she, you're inspiring me. Where does the jealousy go from ins to inspiration? Yeah. Where does, where does that happen within people? Don't let the comparison steal your joy. Let it inspire you. Yeah, to I'm not going to I'm not gonna take credit for that because that was Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Um, but I think that story with the paparazzo is so... So good. I think everybody listening to this will yeah. take that home and go, okay, every time I catch myself looking outside looking in going well they're gonna love this book that's gonna come out because it's gonna give you the tools because let me tell you jealousy envy all of it is all part of our system and the more we understand how we can transmute it and pivot it rather than demonizing mm -hmm. ourselves and hating ourselves for feeling certain ways then i'm not about 
hating them for feeling that way. It's because they just don't know because they're actually affecting their own abundance and their own ability to manifest. Mm -hmm. So I want to give them the tools to be able to catch it Catch. <laughs> and, uh, and, and change it in the moment so that we can all move along together rather than it all being the them and us kind of scenario. Yes. That we've so d- when is this book coming out? <laughs> I, I like, I like it. we're in the last week of uh, beta testing the workshop, Great. you know, and then uh, it should be finished by the summer. Ah, all right. Well, everybody's going to want to find out when they can pre-order this book and yeah. learn more about you. So where can people learn about you? Uh, at the Pause and Joy website. And Pause in, in Joy. In joy I-N. I-N. And the thing is, we see it so often. Like when I used to go to the movie theaters, people would be like, enjoy the film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Or a server when I'm having my lunch. Yeah. Like, enjoy your lunch you know and they would look at me in a kind of strange way and I was like oh that's spirit speaking right through them (laughs) right like the little that little kind of sparkle in the eye so you we do actually use it a lot with each other so it's not like some kind of airy fairy notion Mm -hmm. it's actually something that we came here to do and the quicker you can get to it the better yeah because we all have a treasure we all have this thing inside of us that we have to excavate and find and mm-hmm. be in the labyrinth of and um, discover there's not one person on this planet that doesn't have it. Tremendous gift and sometimes it comes in a form that is not so it's, it's, a, it's a gift wrapped in very strange wrapping paper which is what Darren Weissman said in the film uh, but just you know your mom had cancer your dad yeah. was depressed and your gifts came, sprung uh, from and that. And it activated me because activated I you. knew that yeah I mean I love them dearly but and they're still here by the way uh, but oh. I was like but also <laughs> you know what a lady that I worked with who had pancreatic cancer she said you were much nicer to that woman <laughs> In, in, in the documentary than you were to me I says you were dying we could not I could not like I could not be, cuddle you I could not cuddle you <laughs> yeah. she laughed because there is that aspect if we have got the speedboat and it's near the ni- edge of the Niagara Falls yeah. You know, there is no... <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have time to we pussyfoot around this We don't have time to pussyfoot around what's in your fridge yeah. <laughs> and what's going on in your head and what you're pretending to yourself if you're coming to me. Yeah. Uh, so that, that is uh, uh, yeah. the different gravities that I work with. Yeah. You know, there's other people that I ease in with because there isn't a diagnosis because I know that they'll figure it out on their own and I don't need to be going around like negative Nelly mm-hmm. being like, well, that thing has a bit, right? Because <laughs> then you're intrusive into someone else's own discovery and journey of themselves and being able to shift it themselves. Yeah. So it's a kind of sweet spot. Yeah, and you have that intuition and finesse as a, as a healer with a lot of experience yeah. or you know, facilitator, pr- practitioner, you know, whatever you, ma- wakey master, <laughs> dynamic tapper. Um, I, just, I actually like know, people just say, you need to go to Patty. Yeah. <laughs> and they're so like, just Patty. What is she Patty do? This is before heal. They were like, what is she doing? They're like, don't, don't, don't go into that. Just, you need to go. Just go see Patty. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of was like a fantastic emancipation yeah. from any kind of label. Correct. Yeah, exactly. You don't belong in any school. You have just... Yeah put this beautiful cross um, pollinated you know yeah. experience and knowledge and wisdom from the past from the future from the you know from everywhere and they're trusting their friend yeah and then they're trusting me mm-hmm. so there's something very uh, uh, potent in that and that then there's also before a, they walk through the door the universal collective quantum field energy that yeah. allows that friend to tell that person because that oh, yeah. person is actually ready. Whereas yes. that yes. person wouldn't be inspired to tell someone else because the universe knows that that person is not ready. Well, that was most of my work. Mm-hmm. You know, most of my work was always word of mouth. You would see someone be like, oh, I thought you were kind of in difficulty. Your life looks really good. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and give it to me. So the, that's, that's how it would happen over the years. And even when you saw the videos from or the thing from um serve the warrior mm-hmm. you know with the veterans you then realized that you had worked with 
the producer of that before on another project and she was like oh yeah we couldn't put out the footage uh, <laughs> it's like intense <laughs> yeah no exactly yeah because there's certain things that are very intense like if if I look at that scene with Ava and I'm like wow if you think that's intense really take a deep breath before you come to a workshop <laughs> <laughs> Because we really go there. All right. With so, all, everything all. I love it. And I think there's going to be a lot of people looking you up, listening to this, and ready to uh, just shed the mask and release some shit. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's all about elimination. Mm, yes. Energetically, emotionally, and uh, physically. Yeah. You know, that's the whole thing in, in, in Ayurveda. Everything starts in the stomach and it's all backed up waste. Mm -hmm. And it's backed up wasting of time for yeah. a lot of people. Putting the, oh, I'll do that. I wish I could do that. Oh, I'll do that. You know what it is? It's money. It's money. It's because I don't have the money. And you're like, the money comes when you start doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's when the, the paparazzi from Atlanta, <laughs> he eliminated... <laughs> A no, belief, I believe that it was so cool. kept him on a different level. Than and the him. fact that he knew to have this kind of overt conversation with yeah. he didn't know me from here. Know. He didn't know me from he Adam. He was drawn to you. Because he just energetically knew. So that's why I knew that he was tapped in. He was tuned in to something saying, see her over there, have this mm -hmm. weird conversation with her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. And he came over Isn't and we had amazing? this great uh, conversation. That's what I'm fascinated with, synchronicity. Yes, and that's that's <sighs> really, so why, cool. why are people not wanting to look at the synchronicities and the coincidences, as Carl Jung put it, the, as the magical effect? Yes. And wanting more and more of it. I want it all. I, I know. It. I love it. I love it too. And I love you. I love you too. <gasps> Thank you. That was... Amazing. It was great. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for the work that you do. And thank you for... Thank you. Thank you for taking your call to uh, make heal and pull in all the people that you pulled in because you you also went through that resistance of, oh, I can't do that. I'm totally and I think that in itself is uh, the your own hero's journey. Totally. Right? Mm -hmm. And also when you were in that place of just pure joy of wanting to, I just want to have it for my friends so that I can say, well, do this, this, and this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it was coming from just that very kind of neutral place. And look at all the people that you pulled in that were amazing around. Exactly. I was just like, I just want to sit and talk with these freaking people who changed my life with their yeah. wisdom and their yeah. energy and... And then, you know, the synchronicities that led me to you and yeah. just the perfect group yeah. of people to let that thing calling is, express, you know. You have to step through that door that yeah. was marked, d you're not allowed. Correct. Who do you think you are? Exactly. That question that you came up multiple times. Who am I to do this film? That you went through it, but you, all the people and all the magical effect were all on the other side of the door. Mm -hmm. Amen, sister. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, and it can be for you guys. Walk, it is. It walk is into that you. dark cave. Walk through the door. Yes. Of what you fear. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. That's so good. Thank you for listening to the Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gorris. Thank you so much and be well. <laughs>